Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how a complicated data table can be transformed into a quoting tool using Excel. Let's take this list of goods from a liquor store. There are about 3,000 items. And we have four properties for each item, like description, brand, size, and price. We can set up dynamic tables to create inputs that will narrow down the results based on user selection of properties. For instance, we're going to want to first select from the description, then a brand of alcohol, and finally the size. This will give us the price of that particular item. We're going to be using a form structure where we have each category with its own drop-down selection. This means that the description choice will affect the brand choice and the brand will narrow down the size options. The first level, description, doesn't depend on any other fields and will be the first input we're going to be creating. However, the description column has values that repeat several times, like the straight bourbon whiskey. To make this selection appear like a category, we're first going to need to create a list of distinct values. Under the list sheet, we're going to need to concatenate the description and brand columns. I'm going to add this into column E. We're going to enter the formula A2 and B2. Pressing enter is going to give us a combination of these two fields. We're going to apply it to the rest of the rows. Then we're going to need to combine all three properties, description, brand, and size on a different column. This is going to be the third level of distinct values. Using the same logic, we're again going to apply this to all rows. These two new columns will allow us to compare items from the form selections. In order to create the drop-down list selections and the filtering logic, I'm going to copy the description data into a new sheet. Let's call this new tab distinct. Here, we're first going to select the description list and then go to the data tab and press remove duplicates. I'm going to press OK to continue. Now on to creating the drop-down input. The description values can be used as is when it comes to the drop-down input. This is because its contents do not depend on the other two. To create a drop-down input, we need to go to the Data tab and select Data Validation. Here we're going to select List and then select our Unique Values list. Next, we're going to need to copy the brand names into the distinct sheet. We're then going to make this a distinct list, just like we did before, by removing duplicates. I'm going to want to continue with the current selection. Pressing OK is going to give us the distinct brands list. Now we need to add another column to create the indexing logic for the brand selection. Using an if statement, we can check whether the selected items exist in all columns. If the answer is yes, the formula should add 1 to the cell value above. If not, it should keep the same value. Now we're going to create another column to check for brand and description selection. I'm going to call this description distinct and brand distinct. This time, we're going to concatenate the quote selection and the brand distinct value.
Let's apply this to all rows. We are then going to create a new formula to implement the indexing logic. With an if statement, we can check whether the selected items exist in all columns. This formula will add 1 to the cell value above if the answer is yes. If not, it will keep the existing value. Next, I'm going to create a basic index. Now we can create a final formula to look up description and brand matches from the number list you just created. This formula finds the coordinates of the brand names from the distinct list and the if error function returns the empty values if there are no mismatches. Now let's apply this logic to all rows. Now all we need to do is repeat the same process for the size. We're again going to need to remove the duplicates. And then apply the same logic. This time, we're going to want to concatenate all three fields. The data will be coming from our form selection. Let's apply this formula to all applicable size fields. And finally, we're going to form the size list. Now let's go ahead and create the drop down lists. Again, we go to data validation and select list from these options. The source target is going to be from the distinct list. And now we do the same thing for size. The last thing we need to do is setting up the formula to get the price range. Our coding tool is now ready. We can select a specific item to get its price. Now let's see how we can use Spreadsheet Web's designer to create a responsive web application from this workbook. Name ranges act as connection points between an Excel file and a designer. All input and output fields need to be assigned a name range to establish the endpoints. Our coding tool contains inputs, drop-down lists, and output fields that need name ranges. 
To add named ranges, we first select the cell and then go to the formula step. Then click define name and enter the desired name here. Alternatively, we can simply select the cell and then start typing in the name into the reference box. Pressing the enter key will assign the name. Once all inputs, input lists, and outputs have been assigned to a named range, we can move on to the transforming this workbook into a web application. Remember to save your file. Log into your spreadsheet web account. In the control panel, we're going to press create a new application and then select designer for the application type. Next, we drag and drop our file into the Excel spreadsheet box. We're going to need to assign this application to a group. Let's select the default group and proceed by pressing Next. Now we're going to need to access the designer module by going back to the control panel and pressing the Edit Designer Application button. We need to go to the user interface page to start building the UI. This is going to direct us to the user interface portion of the default home page. Begin by inserting a section by dragging and dropping into the page. Sections are the main components of the web interface. All other modules must be placed within a section. Now we're going to create the description, brand and size selections. To add the first input, we need to drag and drop a drop-down input into the section box. Then we're going to need to configure this input to establish the connection with the workbook and change its properties. The name range field must be pointed to the corresponding name range from the workbook. Then we're going to need to select the list of options from the list name range. The name field determines the label to be printed before this input. In this case, the input will say description. Once the input is defined, press the submit button on the bottom of the sidebar to save your changes. Now we're going to do the same process for the other inputs. The last UI element we need to create is the price field. To do this, we're going to use a content field and place it right under the inputs. Clicking the content module, we go to the edit content menu to insert the price calculation. The content editor allows us to add text, media, or hyperlinks into a content box. Next to the product price, I'm going to add double curly braces. This will give us the available options to insert a named range output. Selecting price from this list and closing the double curly braces, we'll print the price calculation here. Click the full screen icon to go back and remember to press the submit button to save your changes. We are done with the user interface. Let's preview the application and see what it looks like. If everything looks good, click publish to make this application online. Thank you for watching.